I have this theory that like, I think stories, I think we have a biological reaction to stories in the same way that we have to music. There's a reason why the Bible didn't just say, just do these things. There's a reason why they put them in story, right? Because it's far more impactful to, to, to listen to this story. And I wonder if like through osmosis, the behavior in the stories kind of get locked into our long-term memory, where if you just tell someone a rule, it's short-term and then might be fleeting. The thing about having the rule embodied in the story is you see how it's acted out. That's much more convincing to watch how something's acted out, partly because then you also know how to act it out, right? If it's just a rule, you have to translate the rule into action. But if it's a story, then the actions are laid out for you. One of the biggest and most influential names in comedy today, the business savvy Schultz has been credited with helping to spur democratization in comedy. He has proven that comics looking to retain ownership of their material by self-releasing on platforms like YouTube can achieve equal or greater success, both financially and in terms of the building of an audience in comparison to those who strike deals with streamers or networks. Schultz recently sold more than 150,000 tickets as part of his 10-month sold-out infamous tour, which he capped off by selling out the 6,000-seat Radio City Music Hall in New York twice. He premiered his subsequent special, Infamous, exclusively via the live streaming social media platform Moment House in July. Schultz has self-released multiple specials, including his first titled 441 in 2017. He's also managed to find success through more conventional channels, having created, written, performed, and executive produced the four-part comedy special Schultz Saves America for Netflix in 2020. The next project he's involved in as an actor is Kenya Barris's remake of the classic streetball comedy White Men Can't Jump for 20th Century Studios which has him sharing the screen with Laura Harrier. He will also appear in Netflix romantic comedy, You People, top line by Eddie Murphy. That must be a thrill for him. Jonah Hill and Julia Louis-Dreyfus, which Barris will direct from his and Hill's script. Schultz will then rejoin Barris for MGM sports comedy, Underdogs, alongside Snoop Dogg, so there'll be a lot of marijuana involved in that. Past credits on the TV side include HBO's Crashing, Prime Video's Sneaky Pete, and IFC's Benders. Schultz's podcast, Flagrant, is listened to by two million devout fans weekly. He also co-hosts Brilliant Idiots with Charlemagne the God. Looking forward to talking to Andrew. Uh, I was originally going to do it with a streamer, right? And then they they were unhappy with some jokes. I think the climate changed a little bit and they were quite concerned how the jokes could reflect on the brand, which is reasonable. I think that like a private corporation has the right to make those decisions for themselves and then, uh, you know, see how things go for them after that. Now, sometimes those decisions could be the wrong ones. You know, you could maybe become too woke in your content but there is something interesting that I've learned from like being in, in Hollywood a little bit more now is that like, I used to have the perception, you know, I think we all create these perceptions where it's like, there's this like group of organized individuals that are like coming together and making decisions on like what is palatable and what isn't pal palatable and then inserting those into culture in their like different fields like Hollywood one of them. Okay, the, all the movies this year are going to be about uh, non-binary or whatever it is. And after being in it a little bit more, I think that it's way less organized and more about self-preservation. So it's like, how do I not lose my job? Well, I worked with uh, middle managers for a long time when I was selling uh, personnel evaluation technology to corporations. And I did that for about 10 years, rather unsuccessfully. We found one company right. that used them extensively, but I learned very rapidly there that the 
fundamental motivation of virtually every middle manager in a corporation is, how can I not get blamed if something goes wrong? Yes. That's it, man. Yes. There's no, there's no yeah. ambition. There's no desire yeah. to grow the company. There's nothing yes. but, I don't want to stick out. If there's a mistake, I don't want it to be on me. I hope I yes. don't get blamed for anything. I'm not going to do anything dangerous ever. And yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea that people are organized enough to have a conspiracy is that that's just so rarely the case. But I was part of that belief a little bit because you see it and it looks so obvious. You're like, why is every single movie the same? Every single TV show the same? Are they having the same values? But then after, like I had a moment on a show a while ago where a guy got fired, a white older man got fired because he read the N word. Like he read the script and it had the N word in it. And like the whole cast was kind of like, well, the people I spoke to on the cast, even the black people on the cast were like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that offensive. But the companies involved were thinking what the middleman was thinking, what you just said, which was, okay, I don't want to be responsible for this. How do we, uh, how do I get this blame off of me? Okay, maybe if we just remove this person, it'll be a sign that we are, we care about the people that are here and we don't want them to be offended, et cetera. Now, I don't think, I don't know, I don't believe that the guy did it out of malice. And the black people that I spoke to on the cast were like, yeah, I don't think he was being malicious at all. Um, but it was one of those things where everybody was fighting for the the ability to continue working and they didn't want to take that responsibility and because of that they made a very woke decision yeah so now it may you know what i'm saying it made me look at the industry a little differently like everybody it's like maybe the more desired the job is the more willing the middle managers will be to 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 be extremely liberal in their values so they don't lose that opportunity. I don't think that exists on a construction site because the guys there are like, look, I can get a job doing drywall somewhere else. So I'm gonna say whatever the fuck jokes I wanna say on this construction site. So I think too though, there's there's a complicating factor there, which is it's something like this. So, you know, each of us carries a representation of systems of ideas in our in our imagination, in our mind. And those ideas are active within us. That's one way of thinking about it. And nobody is a 100% repository of all woke ideas. But, yeah. <laughs> but so there's fragments of the woke net of ideas in any given individual. But if you get 20 people yeah. who have fragments of those ideas in their head all together in a room, then you have the whole <laughs> goddamn woke catastrophe operating right. and then it'll look right. like a conspiracy and then you can take 20 different people each of whom have fragments of the woke nonsense in their head and put them yeah. in a different room and they'll come up with the same decisions there are yes. these webs of ideas that and in some sense each of us acts as a neuron in a in a in a neuronal web when we're together in a group and so then yes. things look conspiratorial but it's a consequence of the working out of the internal logic of systems of ideas. And so, yeah. and then it might be that each individual actor is fundamentally only concerned with not being held accountable for ever making any kind of mistake, which is a hell of a way to live your life. Certainly no way yeah. to live your life if you're a comedian or a man for that matter. Uh, maybe yes. not even a woman, you know, not even. <laughs>